Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night, about 9.35 p.m. That's California time here. April 12th, 2025 is the date. Latest activity shows a uh, large earthquake around the Afghanistan area, it looks like. A 5.9 earthquake. Uh, originally coming in as a six-pointer on my earthquake app. Uh, but, uh, yeah, looks like uh, 5.9 being reported by the EMSC. USGS not picking up on that earthquake yet. Let's go ahead and check out the EMSC model here. Where it is, uh, well, outside of Afghanistan, the uh, Tajikistan or Tajikistan. Take your pick. Either way, it was a felt earthquake there. Uh, reporting a 6.1. So, let's see. Let me click on more details here. Yeah, 6.1. Holding steady with that. Looks like it got upgraded from a 5.9. A lot of times these large earthquakes will go up and down in terms of magnitude before being reviewed, being reviewed by a seismologist. So this is just preliminary data which have not been uh, reviewed yet. Uh, again, USGS not picking up on it, but uh, it's a rather large quake. We'll check back on that uh, before the end of this update video. Let's go ahead and check out California here. We'll start into the Pacific Northwest, where there was a uh, 3.1 way up north into northern Washington here, off 97, a 3.1 and a 2.6 earthquake uh, was felt around the area. Uh, a little odd location, not a whole lot of earthquake activity out here. Looks like within the last 30 days, a little one, a little 1.1. And uh, not for sure about the fault systems that sit up here, uh, but I'm sure there's some. Uh, either way, for now, a couple earthquakes there. Uh, Mount St. Helens, uh, relatively quiet. I was checking out the, oh, the earthquake, uh, well, at least uh, the uh, seismograph stations there around the area and whatnot. Let me go over here to my volcano page, USGS Volcanoes, because I'm seeing a lot of stuff floating around here on social media about Mount St. Helens is going to blow. And, well, you know, aside from a couple earthquake swarms here last year, you know, I would say it's far from getting ready to blow. Just a, um, you know, it's obviously an active volcano. Uh, but far as earthquake activity goes, uh, let's go ahead and zoom in here. We'll double check that. I believe this one's offline. There's a couple that are offline, so I have to go over. Is it this one that works? There we go. At least one works. Uh, not a whole lot of earthquake activity showing up here on the seismograph station, although it looks a little, uh, looks a little odd. There might be another one here. Uh, see, that one's not working. That one is. Okay. So this is a little bit better looking uh, graph here. Once I get that uh, off of there. Why does why that do that? There we go. So looks like... Uh, Maybe a couple small earthquakes, but during the time that it has a lot of snow on it, we get these ice quakes up there, and sometimes windy, sometimes wind events. Um, Four thirteen. This is UTC time here. There's the uh, earthquake that struck in northern Washington. But far as local activity, uh, there's not a lot. There might be a couple smaller ones out there, but uh, not seeing any signs of any elevated activity. I was just checking the gas emissions which is monitored here by the uh, USGS. And all of them look fairly decent. Uh, nothing really in terms of any uptick out here as far as sulfur dioxide and the hydrogen sulfide, um, you know, the volcanic gases. So no change in that. Um, I did send the USGS a message here tonight asking if they can, uh, well, this is fairly recent. This is about the only recent one I'm able to access. So uh, far as, you know, any up tick going on or is any displacement that would tell us that magma is you know moving up uh, or swelling the area but I don't I don't see anything these are very small very small measurements and uh, obviously if something was going on we would see this trend upwards but it's not so you know you got to be cautious what you read there on the social media accounts a lot of fear-mongering going on out there in the world today uh, unnecessarily all right checking out California a um, couple of smaller earthquakes in Northern California. Most of the movement, uh, Bay Area pretty quiet, by the way. Most of the movement has been down south here around the San Andreas Fault. Uh, nothing above 2.5 today. Most of these quakes in the microquake department 
uh, with a little bit around their swarming area just off the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault and a couple over here around the Santa Monica area. Got uh, some ones out there, nothing big, but a little bit broader scope of uh, earthquake activity out here, I would say, uh, at least today anyway. In the last couple days, we've seen those swarms out here just on the uh, uh, eastern side here of the plate boundary. That That's going to be the North American plate just off that bend region on the San Andreas Fault. And again, that's capable of producing uh, an 8.1. I keep saying it, but uh, that's the numbers that are throwing out there. Been hearing about it for I don't know how many years. You know, the big one's coming. But eventually, that will that will come and pass, come to pass. And just got to make sure you're prepared. A little bit of earthquake activity around the Garlock Fault Shear Zone, which is right here as well. That's uh, nothing big. A couple ones and some twos out there. The rest of the country, earthquake activity around the gas and oil fields of Texas and Oklahoma. But aside from that, uh, the eastern portion of the country looks awfully quiet. Check out the Earthquake 3D Globe here. See what we got. Um, some movement around the Myanmar area. This is the region that had a 7.7 .7 earthquake here number of weeks back the largest earthquake so far this year 5.5 a decent little aftershock there occurring around the region where that uh, seven pointer struck here that's um has it been over 30 days no it hasn't there's that 7.7 .7 right there to 2025 burma myanmar region earthquake again the largest one so far this year still early though um Wow, that's a uh, that's a little bit of a downgrade. 5.8, the USGS finally picking up on that earthquake. Uh, but that could get that could obviously go up and down here for a little bit. Let me see if they've uh, reviewed this. It has been reviewed by a seismologist, so. But uh, you know, I've seen this often. They'll put review down here, and then all of a sudden they'll change that up to a higher magnitude or lower magnitudes. Uh, in this case, uh, we'll just go with the 5.8 for now across that area. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, a little spotty down here, but we are getting a little bit of newer movement. Let's go over here to the USGS map and take a look. That newer event is occurring down south here. There was a five-pointer early this morning at the northern end of that subduction zone. Uh, they had an 8.1 back here in uh, 2021. Uh, but it looks like there was a five-pointer and also a newer 5.3 down south here at the southern end probably right around here so we'll watch this center portion it's been bouncing back and forth here that's just the way the subduction zone works in this area most of the time we'll see movement up north and down south and it should fill in in the center portion here uh, like it's been doing over the last few weeks so keep an eye on that space weather activity Still sizzling out here with some C and M flare activity, mainly from this departing sunspot. Go figure, right? Looks like it's about ready to blast off a major X flare. It's just been flaring consistently, but it's only picked up intensity here uh, just in the last day or so as it's about ready to depart the Earth-facing side of the sun. And we're left with, well, not a whole lot as um, far as any active, major active areas. But we'll continue to watch uh, 40... 55 here that's going to be this region which is now just about ready to crest over there off on the far side of the sun it'd be out of sight out of mind here in a day uh, but we do have a, a decent chance here of seeing some stronger flaring from that sunspot region while it's currently in view uh, not so much around this area there is a uh, another sunspot a couple of sunspots out there on the far side let me show you guys a far side watch see if they got the newest model up yet uh, which they do so there's a, a big one out here. This is the eastern limb. This is a visible disk here from the Earth. We'll get this sunspot coming into view um, maybe tomorrow night. Definitely here in the next couple of days we'll get a little bit visual, visual uh, perspective of if that's going to be a, you know, a decent sunspot to watch as far as any uh, solar flaring goes. And also center disk on the far side, we have this big one. There's the other part of it on the, on the uh, western limb here or off the western area of the sun. So this one, that's a, that's a giant one, giant sunspot. So we'll watch and see if uh, things don't get interesting here in the uh, coming days or next couple weeks, I should say, as far as solar flare activity. Nothing major in the aurora forecast there for now. 
quick glance at the, the uh, severe weather out there. Not a whole lot. Uh, maybe day three spells a little bit of trouble out there across Ohio and a couple other states. We'll check back on that as we get a little bit closer to that time period. Uh, these guys here with the uh, long range severe weather models. I know I've been seeing this floating around on social media as well. And it, you know, these are basically trends here. It keeps track of weather patterns and it spits out data. And been pretty consistent here in the last couple runs of a major pattern change for severe weather across Texas and Oklahoma as we end April and begin May here. This is week two, which begins April 19th to the 26th of April. And then this is April 26th to the 3rd of May. Looks like some major weather pattern about ready to take place out there for severe weather potential across the traditional Oklahoma, you know, Tornado Alley, Kansas, Texas, you know, more so in this area compared to down in the uh, Dixie area. So we'll watch that. Uh, looks like things may be getting interesting as we uh, in the month of April. Real quick glance, still holding steady at a 5.8. Five point nine there on the globe now, so it may bounce around here for a little bit, folks. But all right, uh, I'm out of here. Have yourself a wonderful evening. We will see you guys back out here um, tomorrow morning. Quite active over here across the South America area right now. A bunch of movement from the uh, Peru area south along the Peru Chile Trench. Uh, it's definitely trending upwards there in the uh, the number counts there of uh, earthquakes happening. So keep an eye on that. Things are. Uh, Obviously on the move out here. One earthquake out in, uh, that's an odd one out there in Mexico. That looks like a, uh, what is that, 4.2? A couple other events. Nothing showing up there on the USGS map, but that's uh, some interesting activity down there inland. There's some further activity down along the uh, Baja California region. So keep an eye there on California. Southern California has been quite active. Uh, a couple more quakes around the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault right now since I've been yakking. So uh, just be on guard. Make sure you download that early alert notification system there for your phone. It's called MyShake. It's free. It's not. It does not come with ads. It's completely free. And it alerts you if there's an earthquake in your area. And it will literally uh, give you some time to adjust uh, before you start feeling the waves from an earthquake up here in Northern California when that seven-pointer struck here in December. It gave me a 20-second warning before I felt the waves shake here outside of Chico in Northern California. That earthquake over here uh, off the coast of Eureka. So 20 seconds, that's a, you know, that could be a lifesaver for some. All right, have a good one, folks. We'll see you guys back out here in the morning. Stay safe.